we sort of hinted at the possibility that there could be double and triple bonds between carbon atoms and really between carbon and other elements too if the opportunity does arise. So what does that look like when we're trying to build molecules? When do we know that we should have a double bond or a triple bond? And really, are there any other more complex things that we should be considering? And it's not too bad to kind of figure out when that is, but let's look at it in, um, I wanted to do this as a separate lecture by itself. So um, double and triple bonds, when do we know? Uh, we know, that double and triple bonds are needed, honestly, it's simply if we don't have enough atoms. And by atoms, I really mean H atoms, because those are the things that we, if, if we take my approach anyway, those are the last things that we attach to our molecules. So if we don't have enough atoms, really H atoms, we need to include double bonds and triple bonds. And this starts to get at the definition of double bonds and triple bonds. Those are often called sites of unsaturation. And we'll see that unsaturation means we haven't saturated or fully filled up our molecules with hydrogen atoms. So Looking at an example, let's just pick on C2H6. No, no, no. Six was what we did last time. I'm doing this intentionally, sorry. Um, maybe red's a better color. Six was what we did last time. Let's pick on four this time. So we're going to cross out two hydrogens from our molecule so that we only have C2H4. Using the same approach that we did last time, we're going to first connect the Lewis dots of our carbon atoms to reveal uh, a carbon-carbon bond with six open sites. And then we can attach our hydrogen atoms to the molecule. Now what we notice is that if we only have four hydrogen atoms, we still have two open sites. That's kind of an uh-oh situation. We don't have enough H atoms. And so what we need to do is we need to rearrange the H atoms. It's kind of a step. Rearrange the H atoms that we do have so that open sites, and I like to use the, the, the term open site as, as kind of um, a site on an atom that only has one electron. It's available and open and ready and willing to accept a covalent bond by accepting an unshared electron from a separate atom. Okay, so we want to, so that we have open sites on adjacent, there's no way I spelled that right, adjacent atoms. So on atoms that are neighboring each other. Those are the atoms that we want to have um, adjacent, um, excuse me, neighboring atoms. Those are the atoms that we want to have open sites. Not the same atom, but rather neighboring atoms. Okay, so the issue that we have right now is in our current Lewis dot structure, just redrawing it for you all on this side, we've got two open sites, and we need those two open sites to be on consistency, neighboring atoms. Right now they're at the same position. Same atom. So what I'm saying is, let's move one. Move one. Okay, so how do we move open sites? We don't really move open sites. We really move H atoms. And we want to move an H atom on an carbon atom that is already full, usually one that's full of hydrogen atoms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this hydrogen atom up and plop it over maybe here. It could be on either site, as we'll see. But if it goes on this site to the furthest right, we'll have open sites on adjacent atoms right next to each other. So this next step is kind of a make sure step. Make sure the open sites are 
on atoms next to each other. And so what we have now, after moving that H atom all the way over to the right on the right-hand carbon atom, we've got two open sites that are on adjacent atoms and close to each other. What I'm gonna do is just sort of push those, and I'm going to use a different color arrow here. What I'm going to do is just sort of push those electrons down so that they're between each of the atoms. So we're going to redraw the structure by moving the unshared electrons on neighboring atoms. And we want to move those unshared electrons on neighboring atoms to form double, and usually we take this one bond at a time, so we go from single to double, and from double up to triple. Okay, so what that looks like now is a bond where there are four electrons between the two carbon atoms. And what we would say is those four electrons are really two covalent bonds or a double bond. And if we have a Lewis dot structure, we could draw a Kekulé structure as well. And we should be able to go from Lewis dot to Kekulé and back. Now what that looks like is we have two lines indicating two bonds. In this case, we have no unshared or lone electrons. So we have two lines for two bonds. So that's a double bond. We ran out of hydrogens, we didn't have as many hydrogens, and as a result, we have to have two bonds between the carbon atoms. If you look, each of the carbon atoms still has eight electrons. It still satisfies the octet rule. You'll notice we can't ever draw double bonds to hydrogens because hydrogen atoms only want two electrons to get to their octet. So let's look at triple bonds now. Classic example of a triple bond, there are many, is H, C, N. So I've drawn, drawn most of the Kekulé structure. I shouldn't forget my lone pair of electrons on my nitrogen atom. So how would we get there? Well, what I would say is I would say provide a structure or a molecule that has only carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, or maybe I would just write HCN. That would actually be a little bit of a guiding eye for us. So the players, pieces in this game, so hydrogen with one electron, a carbon with four electrons, and a nitrogen with five electrons. Notice the nitrogen atom can have one, has to have one lone pair of electrons. It's gonna put one of those, that, that lone pair of electrons, either north, south, east, or west, you can pick. I usually stick with north as I'm just drawing the element out. The first thing we want to do is connect our carbon atoms together. We've only got one carbon atom. So we'll move right on to the second recommended step, which is to connect carbon with our non-bonding, or excuse me, our non-carbon hydrogen bonds, atoms. Okay, this is a tricky case because now we have to add hydrogen. We've got one of five sites that we want to add hydrogen, and we could add it really to any but we do have to put ourselves in a position so that if we don't have enough sites filled, and right, we have five open sites in this molecule, if you count them. So right, one, two, three, four, five open sites. We only have one hydrogen. We're clearly going to have some open sites left over. Four, exactly. So we're gonna have four sites, and we need to build two additional bonds between the carbon and nitrogen, giving rise to three bonds total. Well then, where do I wanna put that hydrogen atom. I want to put it at a place where 
I'm going to then have open sites on neighboring or adjacent atoms. Yes, I know the carbon has two open sites on the same atom, but that's, that's a result of the fact that we, just, we can only add one hydrogen atom. So we're gonna have some atoms with more open sites than just one. But that's okay because both the carbon and nitrogen have open sites. So what we can do is we can connect these two open sites with an additional bond and these two open sites with an additional bond. Okay, so we're gonna have two additional bonds between carbon and nitrogen giving rise to three total. What I wanna do is redraw this a little bit so that my open sites are arranged in such a way that we could see how the second and third bond would form. That is, I'm gonna put electrons on the top and bottom of each of my carbon and nitrogen elements. And then I'm just going to swing those electrons in to be between the carbon and nitrogen bond. Every time we pair up two electrons between two atoms, we form covalent bonds. It's just that we're forming two additional covalent bonds between elements that were already covalently bonded. That's going to give rise to three bonds total or a triple bond. So H is single bonded to C, which has not one, not two, but three covalent bonds to nitrogen, which still has a lone pair of electrons that we just draw as a series of dots pressed up against that nitrogen atom. Notice each of the three bonds is extending across the nitrogen atom, and that then becomes, that's clear to us that we have bonds between those carbon nitrogen, three of them exactly, and that's our Lewis dot structure. And as we convert that to a Kekulé, I've provided that answer up above. We see that it goes H to C to N, where now our dots become lines, our lone pairs stay as dots, but we can clearly see there is indeed a triple bond between the two elements. So we have an example with a triple bond. Triple bonds are sometimes harder to see. Honestly, all of this gets better with practice, and there are problem sets where I just say molecular formulas. Here, here, here are many, many uh, molecular formulas. Um, go ahead and uh, just kind of propose a structure. If you run out of hydrogen atoms, start throwing double bonds and triple bonds. Notice in that last example, let me bring that back in front of us, we have a triple bond between a carbon and a non-carbon element. You can do that really with most elements, particularly oxygen and nitrogen, because they have multiple open sites on them. Hydrogen only has one site. It can only get up to two electrons. The halogens, another one of our favorite bonding partners, can only hold one additional bonding partner because it's up to seven, right? It can only get one more covalent bond before it's at its octet. So it's really just carbon to carbon, carbon to nitrogen, carbon to oxygen that we see uh, these types of multiple bonds forming. Let's look at um, another example. Let's do C2H4O. So this is just like what we did previously where we had C2H6, we drew ethane, and then we added an O to it to make it ethanol. Um, we're going to do the same thing here where we subtracted the two hydrogens in our previous example, giving us something like this. Oh, let's uh, make sure we do this correctly. So this was our example previously. What I'm going to do is just sort of cross out the hydrogen replace it with an oxygen. Oxygen is nice because you can always just kind of squeeze it in between a carbon and a hydrogen. Nitrogen, it's a little more complicated because it needs another bonding partner. Okay, but oxygen being, in, being just a two bonding partner puzzle piece, I guess, it just squeezes in between a carbon and a hydrogen atom. And so this would be our example. We could convert that into a Kekulé structure where we have no more dots except for the two lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen. Alternatively, we could position the double bond elsewhere in the molecule. So let's, let's follow the rules, or excuse me, the tips. We have our two carbon atoms. Let's go ahead and bond them with each other. Carbon likes to bond to carbon. And then we're going to put oxygen over here. 
And now we will add hydrogen atoms. I'm going to add hydrogen atoms like this. I'm going to go here, here. Okay, so I've added my four hydrogen atoms and now I have open sites on adjacent atoms, but this time instead of it being carbon and carbon, it's carbon and oxygen. So I'm going to do some rearranging so that those electrons are in suggestive sort of proximity with each other so that we can see where a double bond might form. I'm just flipping the position of the lone pair and the unshared electron that's ready for bonding. And so what we've done from our first example is instead of having the unshared electron on that left-handed carbon, we're going to put that on the oxygen all the way over to the right. And that's going to give us the opportunity to form a bond by pushing these two electrons together to give rise to a structure with a double bond. Let's go ahead and be a little bit more careful. I about jumped right to the Kekulé structure. But we'll draw the Lewis dot structure. Lewis would be proud. Two bonds now between carbon and oxygen. Okay, now if we convert that into the Kekulé structure, that would look like this. Now, interestingly, this molecule is acid aldehyde. It's the oxidation, metabolic oxidation product of ethanol. It's actually the hangover drug. Consuming or having some small concentration of this um, will lead to um, headaches, nausea, dehydration, fatigue, light sensitivity, all those sorts of symptoms associated with hangovers. So um, our body, if it could clear it out faster, you'd never have hangovers, but it clears it out quite slowly. Okay. Anyway, so that's one possibility. We've shuttled that open site from the carbon atom on the left to the oxygen atom on the right, allowing us to make a double bond between carbon and oxygen. But there's another approach. We could have rings, okay, where we have open sites at the ends of molecules. We'll talk a lot about these in future lectures. But for now, I'm just going to show you one example. What if we had a case where the oxygen atom on the right and the carbon atom on the left had open sites? Now you might say, well, let's just make it easy on ourselves. Move the open sites so that they're on neighboring atoms and that's that's great you know that that's um following my advice but i just want us to realize that one thing that we could do is we could sort of connect two electrons in a covalent bond that are on opposite sides of the molecule kind of string them together tie them together to give rise to a ring now this time we would have a ring that could be um let's again draw dots we can have a ring where our three atoms in the ring form a three-sided shape, simply a triangle. Every atom has an octet. It just looks a little weird because one end of the molecule is tied to the other end of the molecule because we didn't have enough hydrogens at the outset. And this would then look like C, C, O with H's attached by lines and lone pairs of electrons. So those are examples of molecules that are more complicated. Please realize that we could add many more carbon atoms to each of these. We're stuck with sort of two, but really the lessons remain the same. You kind of string all the carbons together. If you've got four, you make a line of four. If you've got 20, you make a line of 20. Okay, so the lines get longer, shorter based on the number of carbon atoms. Then you start adding the oxygens and the nitrogens, chlorines, bromines, iodines, fluorines to the various positions, keeping in mind their group number and their number of valence electrons. 
and you add the hydrogens, spread them out as much as you can, I guess, and then look at how many open sites that you have. Add double bonds, triple bonds, and if you're feeling adventurous, some rings, um, just to make sure you've got molecules where every atom has an octet, you've used all of the atoms in the empirical formula, excuse me, molecular formula, used all of the atoms in the molecular formula, and there aren't any sort of weird rule violations like having too many oxygens bonded together.